Priyam, and welcome to this month's Pradvi Seva Sangha workshop on Living Simply. It is my privilege to introduce today's speaker, Meenakshi Umesh. Meenakshi ji is the founder of Povidam School in rural Tamil Nadu. Povidam means love for Mother Earth. Povidam provides a curriculum that is based on sustainability and minimalism that teaches kids to uh, grow up to love themselves, love Mother Earth, and love everyone around them. Um, Manakshi ji also has expertise in organic farming, sustainability-based space design, and water conservation. I cannot think of a better person than Meenakshi ji who lives a life of simplicity and minimalism um, to tell us more about how to inspire others about living simply and to be inspired by those around us in, in li living a simple life. Without further ado, I pass it on to Meenakshi ji. Hari Om. Uh, very good evening, I think, in your place. <laughs> For us, it's morning. Uh, very happy to be here, and I was fortunate to listen to all of your uh, great uh, action and initiatives for the last half an hour. And I'm really uh, blessed to be part of uh, such a huge group who's thinking of the planet almost every minute. I think Vignesh said that, you know, it always brings us back. Uh, our pain becomes smaller and more insignificant when we think of the planet and what she has been giving us. And yeah, and in spite of everything, she continues to love us. And that's the most beautiful part of the planet. <laughs> so um, for me, uh, this uh, whole process of uh, connecting with myself is what has uh, brought me to connect with the planet. And uh, in the last 30 odd years, what has really happened is that I actually uh, refrained from living in a city and I moved to a rural area because I found that uh, it was very difficult to do positive action in the city. And uh, I felt uh, I needed to uh, to absorb myself, you know, for all the consumption that I had done for the 21 years of my life. I felt I had to create enough resources and only then I could die in peace. And that's the reason why we moved out and bought a plot of land and uh, I spent a lot of time conserving soil, conserving water, conserving uh, our uh, relationship with the community. And uh, now we have a young forest there. And for the last 22 years, we've been running this, uh, yeah, I mean, for lack of a better word, you have to call it a school, but I'd rather call it something like a space where children are allowed to remain children. Because it's very, uh, very beautiful the way children are when they are born. Uh, they are completely, you know, uh, they have this uh, inner guiding voice and an inner light that kind of focuses on, do this now, do this now, go here. And somehow by all our social interaction or trying to protect the child or trying to teach the child, we end up snuffing out both the inner voice and the inner light. So what we try to do, what I have learned is the more we let children be, uh, the more uh, they connect with who they are. And of course, you know, they understand their connection and their dependence on the planet. And in the process, because we sometimes get kids who have been in the city or have been in a way of life that is uh, not... Uh, or rather they've already been snuffed out. Their inner voice and inner light has already been snuffed out. So how to uh, bring them back unto themselves? That has been our uh, focus and uh, also our success, I think, in, uh, in a way. Because uh, finally, if, if we believe that uh, the human being was created in, uh, in lieu of nature, that you know, if, if we try to understand uh, what is the role of 
the human being in in this whole uh, scheme of things where mother nature has she has everything why did she create the uh, humans at all there's no there's uh, no real uh, reason and uh, when we try to think about it whenever we talk to the children about it we try to ask them like what do you think what is how are you different or what are you going to contribute and why has a mother nature created a human being and we go and try and understand how things work in nature where uh, everything is is in motion in a cyclic way but everything is dependent on the other and there's so much other connection you know interdependence and every other uh, living being follows the law of nature and succumbs to uh, what is but is human beings are the only one who try to change the what is because of our uh, desires or our uh, maybe our uh, arrogance even so uh, in in this when we try and understand what is our purpose of life in uh, being born as a human being uh, when we discuss we find that the only role the only possible role that the human beings could have in nature or the way mother nature perhaps visualized when she created uh, us would have been that she has given us these faculties of you know we have hands and we have um, uh, this uh, faculty of thinking ahead of you know knowing what's possible of understanding the past and carrying it with us and therefore learning from it and perhaps making things happen faster so the only real role that we could perceive for uh, every human being would be to be able to recreate faster than we degenerate the planet because it is possible you know we know that um, in nature it takes maybe 300 to 400 years for one inch of soil one centimeter of soil to be created but as as human beings we can understand the process and we can create soil in our own kitchen in a pot using the vegetable waste using the leaf litter that we collect from everywhere so we can create soil at a much faster rate because we understand the processes and that is how much responsibility mother nature has um, given us and it's up to us to become human <laughs> so we need to be the human that mother nature visualized she thought that okay everything that's going away these people can you know bring back much quicker like in nature birds have the responsibility of spreading the seed and increasing the uh, spread of the forest you know it's it's their job basically in nature nothing is uh, uh, sitting idle everything has a role to play and they take that role very seriously and it is designed into the life cycle it's like birds have to eat fruits and then they have to fly away and you know deposit the seeds and that's how a forest spreads and now the same thing humans can do much better and uh, we are planting trees not only that birds can only plant but as humans can protect can nurture that is what we have to you know feel uh, uh, blessed with that we have this um, is responsibility of actually becoming uh the servant of mother nature so this is what we try to communicate with the children and uh, the more i have uh, worked with children i find the problem and uh, the uh, the block actually is where uh how we perceive ourselves actually the problem is not outside the problem is inside the problem is how i perceive myself and for that we have all these you know 
millions of advertisements that tell us how we should be, how we should look, what we should do, and uh, making us feel less, making us feel insignificant, making us always compare ourselves with you know this multitude of other people that uh, yeah are more beautiful, more uh, religious, more whatever. So uh, the focus that we have at Povidam is that you know every child should first realize that they are a special creation and they have a special role we are all humans but even within that you are special nobody else can be you and you cannot be anybody else and you know be proud of whatever it is that you have feel that gratitude that uh, i have been born and take responsibility because uh, in our scriptures, you know, in our soul journey, we choose. We choose our parents. We choose our location. We choose our situation. We choose our struggles because that is what is needed for our soul journey. So instead of feeling, oh, why am I born here? And why don't I have better parents? And why don't I have all this? I just have to understand that I have chosen this. And I have to take responsibility that everything that is happening, good or bad in my life, is what is going to help me on my soul journey. My physical journey on this planet may be difficult, but it is going to uh, support my soul journey and I therefore have chosen. So we have this discussion with the children that you know we, we give them a small, uh, we say like even say for example, this uh, mantra uh, you were talking about, Om Lam Prithvye Namaha. So we say, close your eyes and say the mantra without using your voice. Let's close your eyes. Say the mantra without using your voice. And uh, are you hearing it? And who's directing it? So we uh, help them to experience that they are not one. You know, they are actually three entities all rolled into one. <laughs> so. There is the body that is saying the mantra. There is the mind that is listening to the mantra. But there is the will, you know, that is focusing the energies to stop listening to everything outside and focus on the mantra. So this willpower is where uh, our soul journey directs us and takes us through our willpower. So how to develop this willpower? And the more we develop the willpower, the more we listen to ourselves, the more we become confident that I am. No, I'm great, I'm wonderful, I'm beautiful, I am the best. Every morning you wake up and say, I am the best. And therefore, everybody else is the best. And therefore, the amount of respect and love that you feel for yourself increases. And therefore, for everything else and everybody else, it also increases. So this inner journey is very deeply connected with our outer action. So when Zoe was saying the children are finding it difficult to you know, go and talk about it in their classrooms, it is because they are afraid that others are judging them. And if we can um, free them of this fear of judgment, they'd be able to say what they think. And they'd be able to say uh, whatever is right at the right moment. And they'd be able to take action. So the strength has to come from inside. And how do we uh, bring that about? So we have, I mean, I've written it in English and maybe it can be translated into, and I'm sure uh, Vivekji has better mantras than me in all of this. But the, the thing is to just, you know, uh, we tell the kids, everybody who is uh, engaged with us, even when we have a workshop for one week, we see the children. Wake up, look at yourself in the mirror, you know, keep it as close to the face as possible so that you can only see your eyes, not your, you know, really your face. And connect with your soul and say, say loudly that you're the most beautiful human being on this planet. That you're the most wonderful person I know. And I, I'm so grateful that you have been with me in this journey. And I will always be with you, whatever happens. And 
then say gratitude for your body. You know, thank, I thank this body. It allows me to do whatever I decide to do. And it supports me in all my physical and uh, emotional uh, struggles. So we have these four or five sentences that can be put into, I have tried to put it in the article. But uh, that I think is the core of uh, Prithvi Seva. It's not selfishness, but it is self-love. Because if you cannot love yourself, I don't think we can love anybody else. You know, because we know ourselves completely. We know we are with us 24 by 7. And if we feel always that, no, I'm not good enough, I'm not, then it is very difficult for us to accept that anybody else is good enough. That everybody is doing their best in their worst situation. And I think that is the faculty that is uh, needed, you know, to accept everybody as they are. And before that, we need to accept ourselves as we are. Whatever my uh, limitations, whatever my, uh, maybe I'm, I'm a criminal also. But I'm not a criminal because I want to be a criminal. I'm a criminal because of the way society has dealt with me. The way I have been responding to the pressures that have come on me from around me. So, and therefore I need to be accepted as a good human being, first and foremost. And therefore that love can be generated, that compassion can be generated only when we feel completely comfortable in our skins. And that is where I think we need to take our children, especially very difficult in the face of all these media uh, stuff, all the you know, social media groups, Every child is trying to be rather than being. And that is where the, um, the struggle actually is. It's inside. They, they all understand. They all understand how beautiful the earth is, how much they would like to do. But it's not that they don't understand. It is that they are unable to implement because they fear. And what do they fear? They fear judgment. So, yeah. Uh, so that is where I think our focus needs to be at. Uh, so, I'm so, sorry, this guy is distracting me. Okay. Uh, and how do uh, we bring this about in uh, our workshops? is we have discussions with the children. And like Usha was saying, we listen to the children rather than talk to them. We hear what they have to say. We hear their fears. We hear their apprehensions. And we, uh, we ask them, you know, what is the worst thing that can happen? Fine, so what? Let people judge you. You know who you are. And they need a lot of encouragement and a lot of support in that direction. So it's very easy for us to take positive action once we are completely sure of who we are and what we want to do in this lifetime as a human being. What is the purpose of our life? So we need to find the purpose of our life. And I think that is what education should be all about. That is what it is supposed to be. Education is to know who I am, to understand myself, then to understand my uh, connection or my uh, place in society, and then to understand how I'm indebted to the environment, what role I can play to ensure that I have minimum impact on the destruction, that any life, I mean, you do anything, you will be destroying. When a cow eats grass, she does destroy the grass. But, but that's minimum because she puts her fertilizer by, right back there. The dung is right there. She kind of returns what she's taken from there to that particular place. But as human beings, <laughs> for um, being so intelligent, you know, we have all these toilets which flush down all our nutrients which are meant for the soil 
into the rivers and into the sea. With so much intelligence, this is how much we have understood the processes in the universe, the processes on the planet. So I think that's where we've gone haywire. As humans, we've, we've in the name of etiquette, in the name of uh, civilized uh, life, we've forgotten the basic processes. How can we integrate the knowledge and you know, remove um, the disgust that we feel for our own base? I mean, two minutes back, it was inside my body. Or maybe even one second back, it was inside my body. And now it's something which is disgusting. Why don't we see this as a resource? Everything that you know, we use, it can be converted into a resource. So at Povidam, we are very extreme. We have only composting toilets. We have no toilets that flush things away. We say we have to return what we've taken from the soil back to the soil. And it's possible to do this. There are friends who have done it on their rooftop in uh, Chennai city or in Bangalore. They've con constructed a composting toilet where they collect all their night soil, mix it with soil and leave it for about six to eight months. And then they use it in their garden. We've been doing this for 30 years now. And uh, all our apprehensions about disease, pathogens, have been proved uh, very, very, uh, how do you say, ill-based. There, there, there is no foundation for these fears. You know? So <clears throat> I think we have to look at the processes in nature and plug in so that we don't take away from this and give it to that, but try to recycle right here and right there. So we pollute the water first, and then we take so much energy to purify that water and then release it onto the soil. It's completely, it, uh, it, it fails common sense. Why, why would you want to pollute something and then clean it? Just don't pollute it. So our way of life is what is, uh, is taken for granted. We feel that there's no other thing possible. We feel that we cannot uh, you know, uh, change this. This, this, is, this is the norm and we cannot change it. So I think children are also stuck in that same norm. As long as adults remain stuck in norms or in expectations of what other people want from us or expect out of us or what is considered uh, the done thing, then uh, what message are we giving to our children? You know, we are limiting them because we are limited. We need to you know, really expand our horizons and really expand our thinking and do very, very radical things. Radical because they're not going to be accepted so easily. Radical sometimes because some states may not even allow you to do certain things. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not fighting, but I guess it is reiterating your, um, your understanding of the process and trying to find solutions within the limited uh, uh, framework that exists. Yeah, I guess I have said what I want to say. I'm grateful for this platform. Thank you, Meenakshi ji. Um, I think we can probably now move into, um, a, we have a dynamic activity. We have ask the participants who are possible to bring. Um, so, so I think uh, perhaps uh, Meenakshi ji, you can guide us through the, through the dynamic activity. And after that, there will be an opportunity to ask questions to Meenakshi ji. Sure. So if I remember right, the dynamic activity is making your own bioenzyme, right? Yeah. And other things that we can possibly do. So uh, you can bring your own bottles, any citrus peels, some uh, brown sugar or jaggery, as we call it in India, and a liter of water. 
And so what uh, we do, uh, what I do at home, is uh, every time, so th the problem with waste is it is aggregated in one place and then it becomes, you know, something which you can't use properly. So we, as we uh, create waste, <laughs> so as we create waste, we also segregate it and put each type of waste to a different type of use because that's how it is supposed to be. So like for our citrus peels, we have one a jar. For our banana peels, we have another jar. For our onion and garlic peels, we have another jar. And for all the vegetable waste, we have our composting bin. That's how everything that is in the kitchen, everything that is wet, can be segregated and uh, converted into something useful on the go. It's not something that you have to collect and then you have to segregate, and because that is a messy, messy affair. So uh, we have these, um, uh, like I said, four jars. One is for citrus fruits, and that is what we make bioenzyme with. Bioenzyme is a a uh, cleaner, freshener, beautiful acid, citric acid kind of a smell it gives, which is uh, something that you can use to mop your floors, wash your clothes, uh, wash your vessels, wash your hair. And uh, of course, it's very good for the skin also. And uh, if you want to know more, it was found that it was very, very useful when we had this lumpy cow disease in uh, India, cows were bathed with uh, bioenzymes and it was poured into their drinking water so that they would increase the immunity because of some bacteria that exists. So I don't know the technical part of which bacteria does what, but I know that it works and for me that is enough. And so what we do is any jar, you, you, you fill one third of it with your citrus peels. And in citrus peels, you can include lemon, sweet lime, oranges, maltas, uh, pineapples, uh, even pomegranate, the, whatever the waste. So all these can be used to make bioenzymes. And you can put them together. It, they don't have to be segregated. So all your citrus fruits would be in this one jar. You, would you break the peels into smaller parts and put it into the bottle? So if, if uh, I know how this is supposed to go ahead, but are we supposed to do it? Are people, yeah, great, wonderful. Yes, please, please. Yeah, if you have a big mouth uh, jar, then you don't have to worry about breaking into a small piece. You can just go put it as it is. One third, one third, yeah. Yes, no, some more, some more, some more. Because when you put big pieces, then they don't compact. So actually it will be like half, and then it will settle down. Some more, okay. And the thing is, it's not like okay. Uh, every day I eat only one orange, so you know it's not one third. So what do I do now? It doesn't matter. Whatever you have now, you only have to remember that it has to come up to one third. But even now, you can start off. You can put, you know, handfuls of jaggery. So normally, if you're putting one liter of water, then you need to put so much. Normally, there is this obsession with measures, and we don't have the time to, you know go find a measuring instrument, find and put it. And that's why these things don't get done. We say, okay, all rule of thumb. You don't have to worry about measures. Just go by your one and pull. This much jaggery is great if it's in powder form. If it is in a, a lump, then you just put a lump this size. Try to break it because then it's easier. But if you don't break it also, it works. See, Mother Nature has this beautiful processes. She knows how to correct everything that we mess up. So she will do it. So you put that and you fill it with water. Uh, normally it's supposed to go to the full liter. So if you're not put enough orange peels, you make sure that you have little space left so they can add. Put your jaggery and put the water.
Yes, Rita ji, you can show me. Yes, wonderful. You put the jaggery into? I, I, not yet. I haven't put it yet. I have to get, go get it. I'll, I'll, no issues. Okay. You can add yeah. it later. No issues. Okay. This is good enough. The other thing is a similar jar you use for banana peels. You cut the banana peels into small pieces, put it in the jar. Each of these jars should be, you know, they should be covered with a lid. They shouldn't be just covered so that things can get in. And they shouldn't be tightly closed because then the gases can't come out and you'll have an accident at home. You know? This is worse too. So uh, we put a lid. Normally when you put the lid tightly and then you unscrew it to half. That takes care that the, in, the gases that are generated inside come out, but nothing from outside goes in. Because, see, when you, if you go and read how bioenzymes are made, they say, you know, you have to open it every day, then close it, make sure. I don't do any of these things because I don't have the time. And I believe that Mother Nature will take care of all this. I just have to use my sense. Okay, so now put it, one bottle is full, put it in the corner in the darkest part of the house. And maybe check it once a week, you know, just see, okay, is the lid tight enough or it's too tight or what's happening? And don't open it, just unscrew it and screw. Don't open it because when you open it, other bacteria can go in. But even that is not a problem. If at all you get, you know, you will get a fungus kind of a layer on top. As it uh, ferments, you get a fungal layer on top. And sometimes, uh, mostly it should be white. It should be white, creamish kind of a fungal thing that comes on top. How you know it is ready is, uh, no, no yeast is needed. Somebody just put up a message saying, I've added yeast. There is no need for adding yeast. It, it needs a particular temperature to ferment faster. But even in the coldest of temperatures, it will ferment. Maybe it will take longer period of time. That's about it. So you can keep it warm, you know, like in India, we have these tea cozies where, because it's going to generate heat. That is what the microbes are going to do. Only thing you need to do is keep it uh, covered so that the heat is retained there, right next to the bottle or jar or whatever, if at all. But if your internal temperatures are something like 25 degrees, it works. There's nothing to worry. And uh, even 19 degrees, it works. It works here in winter also. We don't have any issues. So uh, what you can add, you can add more oranges, you know, till it is full and then you cover it and keep it in the corner. It's not that you have to do it in one go. So uh, this is, um, and for the banana peels, and like you've cut, put it in the jar, keep it for one week and then use that water to pour for your indoor plants. It's very high in uh, phosphorus very high in potash. The uh, onion and garlic peels are very high in uh, sulfur. So these are nutrients, basically, which need to be returned to the uh, plants, which we have taken from them. So you keep the banana peels also for a week. And you can add a small piece of jaggery to increase the microbial action. See, jaggery is, is uh, the... Uh, the home for microbes, actually. It's somehow nature has, you know, this very specific uh, uh, role for each of these uh, things. So actually all fruits also works. Like if you put bananas, papayas, and put all the other fruits, you get something called an EM solution, which is which you can use directly in the fields. Like if you have rotten bananas, you can put that in the same bottle. Nothing will go wrong. Papayas, you can put in the same bottle. Put a wee bit of jaggery to increase the speed of action. How we know it is ready is the peels will settle down. This is for the bioenzyme. For bananas, it doesn't matter. Just take the water, pour it to the plants, and you can uh, pour water again. Add, keep adding more uh, bananas till your uh, thing is quite, uh, you know, the bananas will be, the peels will be like almost, um, almost decomposed. And that you can add to your compost bin. Because if you add onion peels and uh, uh, banana peels directly to the compost uh, bin, it takes longer to decompose. Once they've been in this jar for a week, then they are easy to compost. 
So uh, how we do compost here at Povidam? We have these uh, earthen uh, flower pots or whatever they are called. You know, they have they have this shape, and at the bottom there is a hole for the water to be drain extra water to be drained and stuff like that. So normally we just put uh, some stones at the bottom and then collect dry leaves. So one of the things that uh, uh, you know children find. Uh, so I'll let just to give you a background, we have a online class. And in the online class, the children study at home, but they do exactly the same things because we have the story and like you were saying, the curriculum of the five elements. And in each of these elements, there's some action. And action is to collect the dry leaves and start making compost to understand the processes. Because actually, that is science. So uh, children feel very hesitant, you know, I, I have to go and sweep. Uh, so then we said, sorry, if you can't do that, you don't have to do this. You don't have to create, you can create uh, waste. If you feel good that you know, you're polluting, then continue, no issues. After a few days, then they say, oh, no, I, actually I will go and do it. So they come up, you know, they say, no, if you're comfortable that you're creating waste and that you're you know, making life difficult for the planet and for the other creatures, fine. It's, it's not in my conscious. So out of a group of 15 kids, one or two will not have these issues. So they go and collect. That becomes the inspiration for the others. So we don't force or we don't judge them and we don't say, no, look, why can't you do this? No, we don't say, okay, if you feel comfortable, you feel happy that you have created uh, something that's messy and that somebody else who is as human as you is supposed to clean, then it's fine. And slowly they they start doing it. So collecting these dry leaves from outside is one thing that uh, takes a little time, but it happens once. And then we bring soil, just any soil, if possible, soil that does not have pesticides or you know uh, too much of fertilizer. But even that, uh, I think Mother Nature takes care of because. She knows how to deal with all these uh, uh, deficiencies of the human brain. So, so, and what we do is we just do layering. So we have these stones and you put about uh, two inches of uh, dry leaf litter and you put your wet waste, whatever, you know, the today's waste. Try to cut it small so that it decomposes faster. But if you don't want to cut it also, it's great. It's just going to take longer. That's about it. See, it all depends uh, what kind of time we have. So if we have only time to put it there and put the soil and leave it, we don't have to worry. We've done the maximum we can in this particular space and time that we are living in. That's good. And then you put a layer of soil on top. And that's it. We don't have to do anything else. If you really feel that it's going very slow, sprinkle some jaggery. And anyway, if you're going to take out your banana peels, which have been doused in a little bit of jaggery and they have those right microbes and put it there, it's going to you know, get uh, uh, corrected by itself. So uh, the only thing we cannot put in the compost bin in this, in which we can put the onion peels, we can put the banana peels, but we cannot put the citrus waste into this. Uh, because, uh, yeah. It, there, there is a big difference in the kind of microbes that are there in the citrus uh, solution and in this. So you keep them separate. So whatever your waste that comes from the uh, citrus peels, just uh, squeeze out the water as much as you can and dry it a bit. It's a very good vessel cleaner. If you can powder it, dry it and powder it. It's a very good uh, vessel for washing vessels. And uh, it's a very good scrub. And it becomes a powder, right? So very good scrub for the skin. Just try it. You'll be amazed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these are the very simple processes that we can build into our everyday lives. You know, you just have these four jars and this one bin, uh, three jars and one bin. And as you uh, want to, you know, throw away your waste, you know what to put where. Once it's full, Put it away under, you know, tuck it away somewhere. You can look at it after three, three months. 
there's plenty of bottles lying around and there's plenty of uh, 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 energy that we use in things that are yeah not so productive so i think we can take a minute every day to engage with each of these jars and i think that's about the time it takes it takes 5 minutes for anyone to follow this process and make sure that all their wet waste is upcycled into soil and you are the creator because mother nature takes 300 years to correct make one centimeter of soil and here we'll be making it in maybe 3 months so yeah i guess i'm open for questions now and i think there were some things coming up which i couldn't focus on while uh, uh, in the chats Thank you yeah, so much, nice Chi Chi. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So the citrus, how long should we keep? And then the banana, you said one week. Yeah. So in one week, banana is uh the it it becomes uh, uh infusion of uh, all the potash and uh, potassium that is there. So then you can put it in the uh, composting bin. but for the citrus uh, for the bioenzyme it takes the first time it takes 3 months at least in india in temperatures between 19 and 25 and uh, beyond that what you can start doing is you can use some bioenzyme as a starter or you can use some of the uh, the wasted peels as a starter for the next one The okay. pe- so how you know it's uh, ready is the all the peels will settle down and the liquid will stay on top and there will be this kind of whitish uh, fungus uh, thing on on the top so that is not something to be disgusted with you just have to filter out even when you filter out it will be a cloudy kind of uh, liquid so you put it in a, a bottle and leave it it will settle down and become very clear then you just you know kind of decant the very clear liquid once you decant the very clear liquid you can keep it for years actually nothing happens to it okay. no more um, uh microbial action happens it becomes like vinegar essentially it is vinegar essentially um, okay okay thank you so much yeah so somebody has asked if with plastic bottle is okay yes it's okay so uh, the way i see it somebody has you know thrown these plastic bottles we go and pick it up at least we have given it a lease of life before we have thrown it away because that is still positive action in the right direction so we don't have to worry that oh should i use you know if it is it's already there on the planet you at least make use of it before you throw it <laughs> so we bring it and we make all our uh, uh, bioenzymes and all these things in plastic Uh, bottles plastic jars plastic buckets are also useful for making the compost only thing is if you put a mud uh, or terracotta jar then it absorbs the water and you know it uh, kind of keeps it at a at a uh, uh, how do you say moisture level which is perfect for the microbes otherwise you have to uh, turn it and you know mess with it bit even that's possible i've done it in a plastic a bucket in mumbai in my mom's house so that also works and that also makes beautiful soil but it's just that you know you shouldn't have this feeling of disgust for this beautiful soil that you're creating i don't know i'm not much of a uh, sanskrit uh, whatever but i know that in our scriptures there are three things that you're supposed to get rid of to be emancipated truly and one of them is disgust second one i think is ignorance and third one is fear you get rid of these three you're done <laughs> you're emancipated you you don't nobody can touch you with anything and you can do anything that you want cuz nothing can stop you so if there are other questions we can um take a few more for manakshi ji uh, i did see one question manakshi ji in the chat earlier on was about using vinegar or adding vinegar 
to um, the solution. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to add vinegar uh, because what you're making is vinegar. And the vinegar that we get in the market is uh, distilled. So it doesn't really have, it, it is inert. So we don't need to add that. Thank you, Minakshi Ji. Uh, thank you for sharing your insights. Um, the one part that you said, um, we really struck a card that the adult who is working with the children needs to be in love with themselves uh, part. Um, and um, how do we help adults to do that? Or how do we find such adults? That was the question that was coming in my mind. Any thoughts or suggestions? Yeah, so I think I mentioned that uh, we have a course which we call the Learning Facilitators course, which is essentially uh, a journey of five months in which uh, we facilitate, it's a pre-recorded course and you can do it at your pace. And we facilitate uh, um, personal journeys. So I am available for any, you know, uh, phone conversation, recorded message uh, up and down all the time. And then we do, once in 15 days, we do a live session where we learn from each other. So what we all need to appreciate is everybody has their own struggles and no struggle is small or big. And while being together and, uh, you know, uh, learning uh, about each other's journey, we identify how similar we are. And that really helps. So I think in our community now, we have about uh, 70 participants, but not all 70 of them will come up on any one uh, live session. Three or four, five or six, how many ever come, we learn from each other. Whoever wants to can you know, share their journey or as a voice message or a small video or whatever in the group. And it strengthens our, um, uh, what do you say, our will to continue on the journey. When you know that, you know, there are so many more people who are with you. So the journey essentially is uh, trying to listen to yourself first. So it's mostly about silence in the beginning. And then it is about uh, learning because we've forgotten how to learn as adults. Uh, and then it goes on to you know, being a creator, becoming a creator, a designer of your own life, uh, understanding the use of gratitude and uh, uh, you know, discovering who you really are, discovering the purpose of your journey. So that's how it has been designed. Uh, maybe... Uh, uh, Praveen can help you because he has uh, I, we, he's logged into the thing and he might be able to share a little more about whether it's helpful or not in your uh, circumstance. But what we have found is uh, the the people who have joined have been mostly parents because our parents find it uh, quite challenging, you know, in this space where uh, you're being judged <laughs> so much all the time. You know, as a parent, your child is either your trophy or your, you know, your uh, vein or whatever. So it doesn't have to be either. A child can just be a child. Somebody who has come into your life to teach you how to listen to yourself. So that is the journey that we, uh, we facilitate. You're welcome to join us. Hari Om Milankshi Ji. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to share something, this uh, banana peel thing. Uh, I started using it about a year and a half or two years ago on all my dead orchids. And I tell you, it's a miracle. I have sure. never seen them not blooming anymore. Even the deadest orchids have been revived. Not only mine, but other people. But coming to that, like the banana peel is also very, very good for if you have a corn on your foot. Mm -hmm. And you apply the inside peel of the, you know, the white thing of the banana peel. I mean, it's a little bit messy, but you have to wear socks that are not very good and you can get rid of. But you just do that for a couple of days and it does miracles. And coming to the orange peel thing, um, 
coming from Jammu Kashmir, we always dried many things because, yes. you know, climatically, we never, you know, a lot of stuff was never produced there. So we used the uh, orange peels for sometimes in Kheer, sometimes mm. as an orange, like a scrub, you add it with basin and, <laughs> milk and you know, use it like a facial scrub. And for those who eat fish, you just sprinkle it on top and you just bake your fish and oh. it gives it a very, at least they say, I don't eat myself, but you know, I've give, shared the recipe with others and they say that's <laughs> really a fantastic thing. Also in rice, you can put it, it gives a really good flavor. Quite a few good uses. Yeah, oh, wonderful. But I hope they are organic because there's also a lot of spray on the skin. Yeah, yeah. we try to keep it as organic, you know. Yeah. And then sometimes like when I go to India, I'll get the peels from there because those grow at home and we don't have, you know, any True. pesticides or anything. Yes. So you bring like a bag full of peels and then <laughs> they last two for a while. True, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Vinita Ji. Oh, you're welcome. Um, Thank, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time um, to, to educate us and, and teach us about all these things. And I also wanted to say a special thank you for also teaching about how we can build self-confidence um, and clarity about the self, right? You, you, you gave example with kids and, and mirrors, but I think at least in my case, I can say it's also very applicable for, for adults. So thank you very much. Um, my question is with regards to the orange peel. Um, this is with regards to, let's assume you have the, your bioenzyme, but you want to know, you know, uh, I, I do composting. I have two bins because it takes time for one to decompose so you can start the other one. Uh, but I also put the orange peels into my compost. And I think you mentioned about not putting them in compost. And I wanted to understand why. Are you? Uh, so... Uh, one, they have a better use. You can make bioenzyme. So you don't put it in the compost directly. You extract the important juices and then you put it in the compost if at all. We don't add it because we found that uh, the, the decomposition of the other waste is slowed down once you add the orange peel. And for your other question about, yes, this is, this is very important for adults, you know, to, to feel enough. If I do not feel content with myself and proud of whoever I am, I cannot see the need for that in a child. And therefore, I will always be interfering and trying to judge. So when we don't judge ourselves, when we accept ourselves completely, only then we can accept a child as he or she is. And for that, actually... Uh, so like I said, we have these online uh, schooling uh, thing. We, we do support to homeschoolers. And uh, how do you select teachers, you know, who can do this? So we uh, kind of designed a course. It's called the Learning Facilitators course. And that process is actually in inner work for the adult. Only once they've gone through that, they are eligible to become facilitators for learning in children. So yes, it is very, very important for adults in the vicinity of children to feel completely in love with themselves. 100%. A child sees me, they know, oh, you know, I have to be like this. Why, why should I demean myself? Why should I, you know, always uh, try to compare myself with anything? If somebody is saying something bad about me. Great, that is their perspective. I should respect that. Maybe there is something to learn from that. But that doesn't mean I'm anything less. So that confidence we can give to a child only if we know how to practice. Otherwise, we cannot. We can only teach what we know. <laughs> yes, so there is a, uh, somebody saying, can you visit Puvidam? You're very welcome. Very welcome. We have very basic minimum facilities. And like I already warned you, we are only composting toilets. But yes, you're very welcome to share our little life. Thank you, Manakshi ji. I think I could sit 
and listen to you for another couple of hours. Um, the time has gone by so fast. Thank you very much. Sure. This has been a wonderful, wonderful session. Um, I'll report back about my enzymes to Manakshi when they're ready. <laughs> Um, I think we can so, create a group of, you might have a group and, you know, everybody yes. can put up and uh, you have any questions or you're wondering whether it's right or whatever, you can reach out to me. Not yes. So if you want to add me to your group, I'll be happy to. Be yeah, we were just talking about, uh, we have this challenge that we were, we had announced earlier, the dedicating to baby challenge. So I'm going to repeat that again for everyone who might have missed it. Uh, the dedicating to baby challenge, we are doing until October, uh, mid-October the 24th until Navratri. And uh, we are, the link is in the chat. So if you have not registered, please do so. Uh, visit our website. Uh, we are supporting charities. We are um, chanting. And then we are taking these types of actions to help the environment, help uh, Prithvi Devi. So, and as part of that, we, ha we have a WhatsApp group uh, of which um, actually we have close to 100 people who have joined and registered. And so if you have registered and not joined the WhatsApp group, we highly encourage that you do that so we can stay in touch with each other. And we will also have Banakshi Ji added on as well to help us with these types of questions that um, have come up. So please uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, the other effort that actually has just recently uh, been announced uh, on March 22nd, and that is until Arbor Day, is uh, planting trees. So again, uh, as we did last year, our community is going to get our shovels out and dig and plant some trees. So we do have that. Hopefully will be posted in the chat for uh, you to take a look and and track that as well. So I will end with an OM and anyone who would like to stay longer, please do so, so we can continue the conversation. Hari OM, thank you. Om.